Hey guys, wanted to make a quick video here to demonstrate the concept of a background sequence within the scheduler. Um, so I've got a brand new show directory, nothing here. I, I'm going to create a very simple show. I'm just going to create a single matrix. I'm actually going to use a virtual matrix so you'll be able to see on the screen the results of running a background sequence. So the first thing we need to do is allocate some channels. And in this case, because I'm not sending it anywhere, we'll just allocate 10,000 null channels. We'll then go into our layout and we will create our virtual matrix. Now, when you're going to create a virtual matrix, i.e. a matrix that's going to appear on the screen, it needs to be horizontal. Um, the number of strings is actually equivalent to the number of rows and the number of nodes is 50, so 50 by 50 looks good. A uh, virtual matrix must start at the top left and channel one's a good place to start because uh, we'll just use those channels up. 7,500, we allocated 10,000, we're good to go. So let's go in and create a couple of sequences, um, some simple animations. So I'm going to create two sequences. I'm going to keep them extremely simple. Let's create a butterfly sequence. Um, so it looks good. We'll stretch it out so that it fills up the entire display. We'll quickly make sure it's all rendered. Uh, yep, it's looking good. We'll save that. We'll call that, let's call that butterfly so we know what it is when we're doing the scheduler. And uh, let's quickly go and uh, drop another one on. Uh, maybe something else that fills the whole display. Maybe a bars effect. We'll give it a few more cycles so it moves a little bit. That looks good. We'll save that one as uh, bars.xml. Done. Okay, so we've got two 30 second sequences. Both of them are filling up the entire matrix with color. And let's imagine that I want to treat part of that matrix as a background sequence. So I want it to always play um, one of these two sequences in the background. And you could imagine that would be your P10 panel tune to sign or, or some other element that you always want to be running one particular sequence. Um, now, obviously, the challenge here is that both sequences are filling in the whole matrix. And so you somehow need to overwrite that set of channels with the background sequence all the time. So let's go in and kick up the scheduler. Now, the first thing you'll notice in the scheduler, and this I think was in 32, um, the show folder down here is in amber. And the reason it's in amber is because this show folder doesn't match the XLight show folder and we need it to. So we'll go up to our show folder and we'll move it to BS2. BS was where I double checked everything worked. So that's all good. So our show folder is matching. It's now in black. That's a good sign. It will be in red if the show folder doesn't even exist. So that's good. So now we need to add two playlists. So we're going to add um, we're going to add one with our butterfly, which is good, and we're going to add one with our bars. Okay, which is good. Um, let's actually call it bars and let's call this one butterfly which is good all right so our two sequences there let's quickly go and create our virtual matrix because we're going to want to see it on the screen and we don't really need to name it it's going to be 50 high I use the same number of strings 50 wide which is fine um, I prefer the normal scaling quality. That doesn't blend all the pixels together when they've been stretched. Uh, we don't need to rotate it. Start channel one was correct. Let's get it out of the top corner there. Let's move it over a bit. Looks good. Okay, okay, save it. All right, so at this point here, when I click play here, it should play my butterfly effect on the virtual matrix, which it does. And if I play my bars effect, it does that. So it all looks good. So now let's make one of these two sequences our background uh, playlist. So let's make it the butterfly. Okay. So now butterfly is our, our background playlist. And if we play the bars sequence, what the hell? Our butterfly's there. And the reason for that is that it's actually playing both at once. It's playing the bars sequence 
it as a background sequence. It's playing the butterfly sequence and it's overriding it, which it needs to do because if it's going to be a background sequence, it's obviously going to need to overwrite some of the channel data from the bars effect or from the bars sequence because they, are, they map to the same channels. And so now what the hell, I can't see anything. So what I need to do is I actually need to constrain how much or how many channels the butterfly uh, sequence overrides. So let's imagine that a, a subset of that display is actually my tune to sign, so a range of channels. So if I go into my butterfly sequence, there's a, this parameter here called limit channels. And so I can go into here, and now we need to do a bit of math. Let's imagine that, um, so we, it's 50 high. So if it's 50 times, um, let's, let's move 10 lines in, times three for the number of pixels. So let's start this at channel 1500. And I don't know, um, let's, let's make it four and a half channels. So this is a seven and a half channel element. So this is going to leave, this is going to override basically the middle 60% um, of that matrix. Now it's, it's doing it by channel. So it's going to go from top to bottom because remember our virtual matrix starts at the top left. So if I play the butterfly effect now, you'll notice that it leaves the bars at the top and the bottom. So it's only going to play in the middle. Okay, so what we would expect when we play a normal sequence, if the butterfly effect was the background, is we'd expect to see our bars up here and up here, and then we would expect the butterfly to overwrite the middle. And this is our tune to sign, which is where we'd want our background sequence to play. So that's good. So let's come to the bars effect and play it. And what do you know? There's my bars effect. Now the bars effect is actually playing over the whole element but the background sequence is the butterfly effect. And so it renders after the bars effect and overrides it and writes out my tune to data. So that's the concept of a background sequence. Now there is another way to create a background sequence. You can go in and just export a model to an ESCQ file, um, in which case you don't need to do the constraining because obviously that already um, gets done by the um, the fact that the ESCQ file only exports a limited set of channels. Now there is one other thing that I'll show you before we finish up here. Um, this is set up here to overwrite the um, uh, the 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 as a background it's, it's set to override the sequence but it doesn't have to you could average it for instance and now when we play the bars effect you will see that it actually overlays it and blends it together so you can still see the bars through it um, so that creates some interesting possibilities for how you lay out your background sequence over your P10 side. Maybe, maybe you don't want it to entirely hide your sequencing on the P10. Maybe you just want to overlay it. And there are a number of other options there that you can play with. Um, in this case, with these things being all solid color, it's probably not best for me to use some of the maskings, etc., because it would just mask it all out. But at any rate, a couple of ideas there. Hopefully that gives you a feel for how a background sequence works and how you can use that to create a sequence which drives your tune to sign, etc., without you having to then go and include it in every single sequence. Thanks, guys.